Hi everybody, today we're working on a 2002 Mini Cooper. This is one of the first ones. Uh, this car has a clutch that stopped working all of a sudden. Uh, apparently made a bunch of rattling noises and, and wouldn't, uh, couldn't be driven anymore. This is a fairly long job so I'm making this part one of a two-part video. In part one we'll uh, do all of the steps right up until we're about to remove the transmission. And in part two, we'll pick up from there with removal, diagnosis, and uh, final repair of the car. So let's go ahead and get started with part one. The owner said it worked fine, and then all of a sudden it started making a bunch of rattling sounds. So I have a feeling this is probably going to be a throw at bearing explosion. If you press the pedal, it goes all the way to the floor, and then it just stays there. I can pull it back out again so it feels like uh, the hydraulics are in good shape. I'm not sure if I've shown before but what I do is I take a block of wood uh, jack up about eight inches or so behind the uh, jack point here on the on the side of the rocker panel here and this allows me to make the entire side of the car go up together in one go. Then I jack up the car as high as I can get it Put the front jack stand up all the way, the rear jack stand I'll lower it by about two teeth. That'll get the front end raised up just a little bit more to make it easier to slide the transmission out. So the car's at a little bit of an angle. And we'll get both front wheels off. We need to take the front wheels off so we can um, loosen up a few suspension components to get the axles out. If the sometimes the hub gets rusted onto the wheel a little bit and you can kind of pound back and forth left and right up and down to, to break it free and if pounding with your fit, hands doesn't work you can use your feet as well just be careful be ready to catch the wheel when it comes off with the hub all right now we'll go ahead and get the front bumper off there's a couple of eight millimeter uh, bolts upside down in this position torx t30 right here Underneath on the outside edge, there's two Phillips head screws right here, and then there's three 10 millimeters all across the bottom. Uh, there's a couple of uh, plastic uh, fasteners here. There's actually four right here that we'll need to remove when we want to move the radiator forward a little bit. While we're under here, we'll also loosen these these two uh, Phillips screws to get the skid plate out. So that's all the bolts holding on the bumper cover. We'll pull the cover off. Disconnect all the wiring. There's three lights on each side. There's a temperature connector at the bottom here. And the bumper cover comes off. And pull the wiring back. Next we need to remove the aluminum bumper. There's five 13 millimeter fasteners and four of them are nuts and just this one is a bolt.
Now we'll remove those four plastic fasteners on each side that I mentioned earlier. I'll loosen this 10 millimeter nut here so we can pull the uh, uh, radiator housing forward a little bit later on. Oh, and we need to disconnect the fan wiring as well to allow the front end to come forward just a little bit. We don't need to pull this wiring out, just, just uh, it only needs to come forward by about three inches. Next, there's a couple of 10 millimeter under here, which holds the crash tube onto the front end. And then we got two 16 millimeter bolts for each side for the crash tube. Then you can tap the crash tube out with a hammer. I'll thread a couple of long bolts into the hole here. I don't have the correct size bolt. These are actually toilet flange mount uh, screws here. I can screw them in a couple of threads and then they bottom out. But it's good enough just to have something to hang the front end on without having to go buy some bolts. I need to do that one of these days. Okay, that should give us enough clearance that we need to get out of here. All right, next we'll remove the air box. The air box is just held in by a couple of uh, five, uh, 10 millimeter fasteners here and here. And of course we need to remove this uh, hose clamp as well. There's a wiring clip here. You can't pry this one out. You have to squeeze the tabs to allow it to back out through the hole. It's actually got two tabs here and prying will break them, so don't pry. Next we'll remove the battery. These are all 10 millimeter. There's a foam pad on the bottom here. We need to get the foam pad out because there's a, there's three bolts holding the box in and a fourth one on the outside right here. All right, to disconnect the EQ wiring, first we have to pull the box, the EQ up out of its uh, resting place. There's two clips on the inside here. You just have to push, push them forward and pull up. After you do that, you can pull on these uh, wiring uh, uh, connectors here and force them out. There's another wiring connector on the bottom of the box here. These ones can just be pried out. All right, so now we have access to the top of the motor here, or the top of the transmission. We're going to need to disconnect these uh, shift links cables and uh, the reverse sensor right here, and also the clutch slave cylinder. Looks like the backup sensor's got a small clip here. You just pry forward. This is the same type of clip that's on the fuel injectors. Uh, it looks like it flew away, so I'll go retrieve that. Don't want to lose this clip. So I'll, I'll put the clip back onto its original place so we don't lose it. And um, when doing so, I'll push push it down into its fastened positions. Looks like a couple of 10 millimeter nuts or bolts holding on the uh, slave cylinder. This is interesting. This, this is a different design completely of uh, the transmission from a five-speed 2006 Mini Cooper I was working on a little while ago. So they're both five speeds, but they've clearly got different transmission design. Get the clutch slave cylinder. Just, we'll just put it up out of the way here, but we don't want to disconnect it. It's not fun to bleed this. 
Okay, time to disconnect the shift links. I'll just use a pry bar on each side and just pry. You want to make sure you're prying on the inside metal part to avoid damaging the bushing. There it goes. This worked pretty good. Just get under there and pull like that. Now we need to slide these clips back. Got some real awkward angles here compared to working on like the R53s. Try a flat screwdriver. There we go. The trick is you have to compress both of these clips at the same time. There we go. Next, make sure the wheel is pointed straight. Then we'll disconnect the uh, steering linkage, which is right here. There's a 13 millimeter nut and an elongated bolt here, which holds the steering wheel onto the steering rack. So we need to disconnect this one right here. This one is using a nylon washer, so it's going to kind of complain the whole way out. You can also do this from under the car, but it's kind of easier to do it from on top. So it's got kind of a keyed bolt here. So I'll put those together and set them aside. And then underneath, all I need to do is pull up on this um, the steering wheel linkage and kind of fold it up out of the way. Next, we'll loosen up the power steering reservoir. We're going to take the reservoir out through the bottom of the car together with the subframe. This way you don't have to worry about draining or refilling car steering fluid. So heat shield here, you just kind of bend it out of the way a little bit. So what I like to do is um, remove the two brackets here. That allows me to kind of twist the, the entire assembly around a little bit. And it's a lot easier to loosen up this nut, nylon 10 millimeter nut here because if it's in this orientation, it kind of hits a lot of stuff. Then I just pull this thing up and out. Looks like this car, this is a 2002. They've got the heater hose routing a little bit different than in the later model cars. So we'll just need to be a little extra careful lowering this down through here. It looks like it might hang up on this heater hose. Okay, so that should be everything we need to do on top for now. Later on we'll be disconnecting these motor mounts, but that's not until after we've uh, supported the engine and uh, removed the subframe. So we'll get underneath and start disconnecting stuff underneath. Okay, the first thing we need to do is disconnect uh, the, the, some of these suspension components. So that's the outer steering tie rod end, uh, the bottom of the end link here, and the lower ball joint right here. We'll also need to move this out of the way because this is attached to the subframe and this whole part is going to go down. So we need to take this wiring off. And then on cars with uh, headlight leveling sensors, we need to disconnect this wiring right here. So to loosen the end link, I, I use a 16 millimeter and a 17 millimeter wrench. The 17 millimeter I stick in here, and there's actually a flat spot on the uh, shaft here that I can uh, use to prevent it from rotating. Then I'll just put the 16 millimeter on the outside and, and loosen. They've got a hex key you can put on as well, but I found that this just works real, real quick and less chance of breaking off my hex key on the inside of that little tiny uh, hole. put the nut together with the end link again so I know what goes where. So the steering tie rod is a 15 millimeter. <coughs> we'll loosen the nut and put it back on a couple of threads. Then we'll use a big six pound hammer to send a shockwave through here. Usually, usually it'll come out in about three strikes. <coughs> Oop, it happened in just one strike on this side. We'll put that nut back together. Next is the outer ball joint. And uh, you can either take the 18 millimeter nut off the bottom here 
and then separate the ball joint from the control arm or you can remove these two 13s and separate the ball joint from the hub. Uh, I'm going to show you how to take it out of the control arm. Uh, I've, I've found that sometimes these are seized in here pretty good. The, the bolts will come out just fine but uh, the, uh, the ball joint seat here is kind of seized in real good into the hub and uh, um, it, it actually flexes and warps a little bit as you try to separate them. So I'll show you how to get this out using a, a special tool which is not very expensive and I'll put a link on the description of where you can buy the tool. So the first thing we'll do is uh, remove the 18 millimeter nut. Then thread it back on a couple of threads. Then I'll use this outer ball joint remover tool. This works really well without damaging the ball joint if you want to reinstall it. This tool slides in kind of like this. So you can get these ears underneath the, the seal. You can kind of guide them in at first. And then the rest of the way you can whack it in with the hammer. You want to make sure the tool is in far enough that this lower part here is lined up with the, the stud. This tool uses a 19 millimeter here and then I just tighten it down and eventually it'll pop. There it goes. So obviously now would be a great time to replace any ball joints or, or other suspension parts because you're going to have the subframe completely out of the car. So now the strut is free and we can easily get the uh, axles out of the transmission. Okay, next is to remove the power steering fan and the engine mount, lower engine mount here. Two 13 millimeter nuts, a wiring connector, there it goes. And here I like to use a wobble extension. All right, once we've done all that, the next step is to put a jack under the subframe and start lowering the subframe. So I use a light duty transmission jack for this. You could also just use your floor jack, of course. And you want your floor jack or your transmission jack to center on this, this large uh, hole right here. All right, now we can uh, start removing the subframe bolts. So on each side, there's three bolts at the back here one bolt at the control arm bushing and one last bolt up front uh, it's a little bit hard to see it's right in here these are all 16 millimeter bolts the front one is longer this control arm bar bolt has an extra this bushing bolt has an extra washer on it and the back three are all the same So that should be all the bolts. Now we can go ahead and get, get this subframe out of the way. You want to go real slow. To make sure you don't pull something out that's not supposed to be coming out. Once you've got it lowered an inch or two, just enough to get your hands in there, we can disconnect the power steering pump wiring. you got the control wire here, just squeezing the clip. And then there's the main power feed, which is a big fat, something like a 100 amp uh, lead here. This one you can just grab it and pull. And it comes right out. On the back of the power steering pump, there's a little uh, clip here. You can just pull that out. 
So we'll continue lowering slowly, and watch things as we do so. Just keep an eye on the reservoir as you pull it down. Okay, the reservoir is clear, so we'll just continue lowering. Wiring is clear. And that's that. Try to keep this from plopping over, otherwise it'll leak oil. Okay, next before uh, taking the axles out, we'll drain the gear oil. Yeah, that's a 17 millimeter bolt there, drain bolt. Okay, one last thing on top actually. We need to remove this uh, heat shield in order to get access to one small 10 millimeter bolt which is holding the heat shield over the starter motor underneath. So these are a couple of 13 millimeter bolts. We just need to slide that heat shield back out of the way a little bit. I'll get in there with a 10 millimeter socket. All right, so that, that allows us to take this heat shield off so we can get access to the two, two starter motor bolts. But before doing that, I'll get in here and disconnect the uh, carrier bearing for the right side axle. This is held on with three bolts, 13 millimeter head. Okay, so we removed that, which will allow us to just pull the axle out. It's not in, held in by a circlip or anything. Just pull it out, rotate it out of the way. The axle on the other side is held in by a clip, so we need to uh, pry it out. There it goes. Be careful not to damage the, the uh, seals as you take these out. Next, we'll disconnect the starter motor. <coughs> Bottom bolt's super easy. Top one's a little hard because it's blind. You can't see what you're doing. There's a bolt right, oh, where is it? Right here. And these are 15 millimeter bolts. There's only three 15 millimeter bolts I found on this car. The ones that hold the bell housing onto the engine and the starter motor here. And then the, the outer tie rod ends are 15 millimeter. Kind of weird. These are torqued, torqued down pretty tight, so I'm going to use a breaker bar to snap it. There it goes. Okay, there's no need to remove it from the car. Just uh, prop it up out of the way, just like, just like that. I almost forgot these guys. There's a dust shield back here. And take that off. All right, so it's been about two and a half hours. We've got everything out now, except for the transmission, essentially. We've got the subframe out. The transmission has been drained. The starter motor is removed. The shift linkages are all removed. And uh, really all we've got left is bell housing bolts and uh, the transmission mount here. But before we do that, we have to support the engine. And you can either use a floor jack from underneath to do that, but what I like to do is support it from the top using a, uh, a, strut, a strut tower engine, engine support. And that frees up more room underneath to be moving around. And also, the engine appears to be more stable when it's uh, kind of supported from the top than from the bottom. So this is the tool that I use to support the engine. Uh, real sturdy, frees up a lot of room underneath. Even if you only use it once or twice, it's still worth it. It's not that expensive, and it's uh, nice and safe. 
So I'll post a link in the description where you can get this tool. And the place I support it is, uh, there's a 13 millimeter bolt right here underneath the O2 sensor. Right here there's this 13 mil bolt. So I'll remove this bolt and then I'll put in a uh, aluminum bracket I kind of made up. So here's a bracket I've made. You could, you know, use virtually anything. I just had some spare metal laying around. And I'm going to use a, a longer version of the, the bolt that I took out because this one I just don't think there's enough threads to support the engine. So I'll set the bar where most of the bar is on top here because I'm going to lower the engine when I get the transmission out. And I'll just start raising it and get the weight of the motor onto the support bar. That'll allow us to next uh, remove these three 13 millimeter bolts that are holding the uh, transmission mount. Did I say three 13 millimeter bolts? There's four 13 millimeter bolts. And the last one is kind of hidden under here. And people wonder, you know, why don't I just take this bolt out and lower the uh, whole uh, lower bracket together with the transmission? That's certainly an option, but when you're wrestling the transmission back into place to, to mate it back up with the engine, not having this in the way kind of helps you to move it in the, in, the, in the angles you need to move it. The engine is now totally supported by this bracket. Now we can go, go around and start cracking bell housing bolts. And these, these can be pretty tight so use a breaker bar on them to crack them. This one's a little tight. It's underneath the uh, radiator hose outlet. There it goes. So we can basically remove all of these bolts and leave maybe one bolt in just to keep the transmission from accidentally sliding off of the front away from the engine. But you can go ahead and remove all the other bolts. And I'd probably leave the one of the bottom ones in until last because it's just that's just the easiest ones to get out later on without a bunch of stuff in the way. Okay, so I've removed all but this last bell housing bolt. You can see the transmission is already starting to move just a little bit. So uh, I'll go get the I'll go get the transmission jack and and support it so we can start lowering it on out of here. Not too sure what's going to happen here. This transmission's got kind of a weird angle to it. Kind of hard to support from underneath here. So I'll I'll put a couple blocks here. Go ahead and remove that last bolt. And we'll start prying the two halves apart. And as you can see, it's ready to come out. Unfortunately, it looks like this is in the way. There's a breather valve on the top of the transmission, which is kind of hanging up as I pull it back. So I'll just get this bolt out and get this uh, rest of this mount part out of the way. See, there's this tube sticking up out of the top of the transmission. I'll just keep prying until, oops, the ball bearing just fell out. So yeah, we got something that blew up in there. Okay, so I'm leaving you guys at a cliffhanger. Uh, that's all for part one. Come back for part two to watch the rest of the uninstallation, diagnosing, and uh, repair of this mini. Thanks for watching.